Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Josh and you are watching Our History. Today we are going over the life of Dingi Swayo and his name is associated with the rise of the Zulu Kingdom under the leadership of his protege and one of history's most renowned military leaders, Shaka Zulu. So if you enjoy this, please be sure to like and if you're new here, consider smashing that subscribe button. If this isn't your first rodeo and you haven't showed some love to that subscribe button, now is your opportunity. Thank you very much for watching. Dingi Swayo Dingi Swayo also known as Godongwana, was a prominent Mtetwa king who lived from around 1780 to 1817. He is best known for being the mentor of Shaka Zulu, who later became one of the greatest Zulu kings. Dingiswayo's father was the Mtetwa king Jobe Kakai. During his reign, Dingiswayo successfully employed diplomacy and assimilation tactics to strengthen his power by incorporating nearby chiefdoms into his kingdom. The Mtetwa people are believed to have originated from the Nguni peoples of northern Natal and the Lubombo mountains around 700 years ago, according to Mtetwa of 1995. Lineage Dingiswayo, a prominent figure in South African history, can trace his lineage back to Mtetwa I. It is suggested that both Dingiswayo and Zidu Kalanga may have shared the same lineage through Klaba Kamadungu. Zwide, on the other hand, was the king of various tribes such as the Ndandwe, Kumalo, Msene and Jele peoples. It is worth noting that there is no direct family connection between Zide Kalanga and Soshangane Kazikode of the Ngomalo people. This information helps shed light on the complex historical relationships and lineages of these significant figures in South African history. According to Museum Tuetwa's research in 1995, Dingiswai's family line in the Mtetwa clan can be traced back through several generations. The lineage starts with Dingiswayo and continues with Jobe, Kai, Kaba, Madungu, Simamane and Wengwe, Ndlovu, Kubazi, Nyambose and finally Mtetwa. These names represent individuals who are believed to have been part of Dingiswayo's direct family line. This genealogical information provides insight into the ancestral heritage of Dingiswayo and his descendants within the Mtetwa clan, offering a glimpse to their historical lineage. Early Life Godongwane, later known as Dingiswayo, is mentioned in historical accounts during the wanderings of Nandi and her son Shaka. They settled with the Mtetwa, led by King Jobe. During this time, Godongwana and his brother Tana conspired against their father, but their plan was discovered, resulting in Tana's death. Godongwane managed to escape and was nursed back to health by his sister. He found refuge among the Kwabe and Langeni people in the Drakensberg foothills. It was during this period that he changed his name to Dingiswayo, which means one in distress or one in exile, chief of the Mtetwas. After the passing of his father, Dingiswayo, the son, returned to assert his right to the chieftainship. Upon his arrival, he discovered that his brother, Mawawe, had taken control of the position. However, Dingiswayo managed to successfully remove Mawawe from power without facing any opposition. Following his displacement, Mawawe fled to avoid any further confrontation. Nonetheless, he was eventually convinced to return, only to meet his demise shortly thereafter. The exact circumstances surrounding Surrounding Mawawe's death remain unclear, but it is known that Dingiswayo was responsible for his brother's untimely demise. Captain Goddard Edward Donovan and Dr. Andrew Cohen, members of the 83rd Regiment, embarked on an expedition to explore the southern route into the African interior. However, their fates took a tragic turn when they possibly fell victim to Chief Pakatwayo, whose involvement in their alleged murder remains uncertain. Following this incident, Dingiswayo, who was a prominent figure in the region, obtained Dr. Cowan's horse and gun. Dingiswayo subsequently implemented new military strategies by incorporating western methods of drills, formations and hierarchical command structures. These techniques brought a significant shift in Dingiswayo's military tactics, blending indigenous knowledge with western influences. In approximately 1812, Dingiswayo, with Shaka as his general, launched an attack on the Ama 
Amangwane tribe led by Matiwane. This assault resulted in the displacement of the Amangwane as they were driven across the Buffalo River. This event marked the beginning of a period known as the Mfekane Migrations, a series of tribal displacements caused by conflicts and wars. The Zulus, led by Shaka, played a prominent role in these migrations, as they displaced other tribes in their quest for power and resources. These internecine wars led to significant disruptions and changes within the affected regions. Dingi Swayu implemented a strategic approach to strengthen his position and counter the influence of his main adversary, Chief Zwede of the Ndandwe. In order to achieve this, Dingi Swayu adopted a unifying approach by merging several smaller tribes under his leadership. By combining these tribes, Dingi Swayu aimed to pool resources, increase manpower and enhance his military capabilities. This united front enabled Dingi Swayu to effectively confront Chief Zwide and establish a formidable presence in the region. Through this consolidation of power, Dingi Swayu sought to safeguard his interests and assert his dominance over his northern rifle. Death and Legacy in 1816, Shaka, the renowned Zulu leader, returned to his people to claim the chieftainship, acknowledging the supremacy of the larger Mtuetwa and its leader Dingi Swayu. Tragically, during their joint campaign against Zwide's territory, Zwide being a former ally of Dingi Swayu, Dingi Swayu was captured and beheaded by Zwide near Nongoma at a place called Ngome. Dingi Swayu's personal belongings were interred in his kraal. The Mtetwa forces suffered defeat and were dispersed temporarily until they regrouped under Shaka's leadership. Eventually, Shaka emerged triumphant in the Zulu civil war, achieving victory over Zwide. Today, Dingi Swayu's resting place can be found on the northern bank of the Tugela River within Kekeke's kraal. Dingi Swayu had a significant impact on the history of Southeast Africa with his career. While in exile, he was introduced to European ideas and successfully implemented them, leading to the formation of a well-structured and highly organized army, a first in the region. His military reforms were groundbreaking, setting a new standard for discipline. Following Dingi Swayu's death, Shaka further developed these ideas, resulting in the establishment of a rigidly disciplined society to complement the military reforms. This marked a pivotal moment in the history of Southeast Africa as it brought about substantial changes in warfare and societal structure. If you enjoy this channel and you'd like to support more content like this, because all contributions are greatly appreciated, please take a look at the Patreon link in the description below.